Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to improve my X-Carve by creating some bit storage and some clamps. Let's go. So now that I got my Inventables X-Carve all set up, I need to get all my bits and my clamps all organized. I also need to create a few other clamping options. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use my CNC to actually make a couple different options for clamping, as well as a couple different trays to store all of my bits and some of the small parts that come with the Inventables X-Carve. Now, another reason I wanna do this is so that I can test out all of the different settings in Easel and get a feel for how the X-Carve works. I'm not super comfortable with the plunge rate and the feed rate and the depth of the cut and all those different things. So I wanna, I wanna learn how to do that and this is a perfect project to be able to learn how to do that. So let's get to it. So the first part of this project, I'm gonna be creating some new clamps from MDF. So I decided to use the CA glue and painter's tape method for clamping these parts down so they don't go flying off in the middle of the project. Really what you do with this type of clamping method is you cover the back of your project piece like this piece of MDF with painter's tape and then the front of either your spoil board or a spoil board with that same painter's tape. I'm using some cabinetry back just so that I don't cut into my nice new spoil board that I got from Inventables. Then you spread some CA glue over the top of one side of the tape and put some activator across the other side and stick them together. What this does is creates a secure bond, but not a permanent bond because the bond is wood to tape, tape to tape via the CA glue, and then tape to wood. So there's no permanent bond between the spoil board and the MDF. Once it was secured to the spoil board, I secured the whole thing down to the Inventables X-Carve using the clamps that are provided by Inventables. These clamps are nice, but they get in the way of the dust shoe every once in a while, so that's why I'm creating a couple different clamping options. And with the project all clamped down, I could get to setting up the router and getting the right bit in as well as setting the depth and going through the process that it has you go through in easel to get everything all set up. And once everything was set up, it was time to press go and let it do its thing. With a CNC, it's important to pay attention to your feed rate and your plunge rate. Those are two things that really make a difference depending on the wood that you're using and the bit that you're using. Essentially, your feed rate is how fast the CNC moves the router on the X and Y axis. And the plunge rate is how quick the CNC will drop the router bit down into the wood on the Z axis. If your bit is smaller or your wood is harder, you don't want to go too deep into the wood too quickly and you don't want the bit to be moving too quickly around side to side because that could break your bit or create a really bad looking cut. Easel has default settings based on the bit you're using and the wood you're using, so I recommend starting with that. And then you can always bump up your feed rate as the machine is working and as you get more and more comfortable with the machine. This cut took a little over an hour and once it was complete, I took it off and peeled it off of the spoil board. As you can see, it's not super easy to peel off, but it does come off because it's just tape on each side and the pieces that were cut out just stayed in place on the board. And then I just peeled them off with the tape and removed the tape from the back of each of the clamps. And then I had these nice bumper clamps and some nice uh, turn clamps as well as my 90 degree hold down. Now the 90 degree hold down just screws in place using the original screw slots that are in the Inventables X-Card spoil board. The nice thing is Inventables actually has all of the files for these clamps on their website, so you can actually download them and do them all yourself as well. So just to give you an idea of how these clamps work, everything creates pressure against that 90 degree clamp. These turn clamps just screw in place and then twist and create that pressure. The bumper clamps line up with the holes and you screw them in place with some of the same twist screws that come with the X-Carve clamps. As you can see, both of these clamping options are pretty low profile, so you can get all the way up to the edge when you're using your CNC if you use these clamps. 
And then here are just the regular X-Carve clamps that I used before on this project. So next I wanted to create a holder for all my bits and some of the small parts that come with the Inventables X-Carve. So I set everything up using my newly made bumper clamps and got the router all set up with my project file and let the CNC go. Now this will hold all of my bits. It will also hold my digital caliper, a wrench for the router, as well as the Z probe. Now this time when I had it running, I forgot to turn on the dust collector and I kind of walked away for a few minutes, came back and there was a ton of dust. So I had to clean it up and turn on the dust collector so there wasn't any binding with the bit or the mechanisms. But everything turned out great. I think it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyways, this is not how quick your CNC actually goes. This project took probably another hour, but it's definitely worth it in the end because you have some really nice looking holders and clamps after you're completed with the project. So after it was all complete, I wanted to test it out and see exactly how everything fit and the bits fit perfectly. Again, this is a file that you can download on their website. I adjusted it a little bit for what I needed it, but it turned out great and you can do the same with yours. Next, it was time to create another holder, but I had some issues with my newly made clamp. With these turn clamps, I actually drilled a little too far into the hole where the screw comes and it just popped off. So I'm gonna have to redo these turn hold down clamps again, but that's fine. It'll give me a little bit more practice. So this tray that I'm making is for the clamps that I got from Inventables. It's to keep them a little bit more organized. There's quite a few parts that come with their clamps, but I needed something to kind of keep them all organized. Again, if you get these clamps from Inventables, this file is actually something you can download and you can do this project the exact same way I'm doing it here. Man, it's so satisfying to see the project when it's completed. This is going to be awesome for all of those clamps. Now the next thing that I did is I redid all of those turn clamps. I actually did a couple more just in case some broke. And like she does on every project, the forewoman had to come and supervise, make sure everything was going good, and she did give me a final approval. With all joking aside, I do love to have my daughter in the shop with me when I'm building stuff. Obviously I keep her safe but I love to see how interested she is in all of my tools and share my little hobby with her. It's really fun. So like I mentioned before, I had to actually cut these out again because I cut too deep on the center holes where the screws go. But it was a good opportunity to actually use the tab option in easel. What's really cool is if you're um, cutting through board like this, easel gives you an option to add some little tabs that are on the inside. If you look right on the inside right here, there's a little tab. And what that is, is essentially the bit will cut everything else around it except some small tabs. Instead of having to hold this whole thing down with tape and super glue, I can use tabs to hold the things in place so they don't go flying off when they're finally cut all the way through. So um, it's pretty awesome. And especially with MDF like this, it's actually really easy just to pop these things out. And then with those tabs, you're just gonna go and sand those little tabs, use your, use your sander and uh, sand that off. So uh, pretty easy, pretty awesome uh, that they have an option like that. I probably wouldn't use tabs when I'm doing fine let lettering and there's a lot of letters because you don't wanna have four tabs for each really small cursive letter if that's what you're doing. And also, you know, you run the risk of having to sand that down and have an issue with it. 
So now that I've got all of my clamps cut out and my holders all cut out, it was time to get everything organized. Here is the holder for all of the clamps that comes with the Inventables X-Carve. Like I said, there's a lot of pieces, but this thing really keeps everything organized. Then I organized all my bits with my digital caliper and my Z-Probe. I'm super excited to have everything finally organized. These drawers have been a really big mess up until now. And now that these drawers are all organized, I'll know where each clamp is and each tool is when I need to get a project done. I'm not gonna have to rummage through each drawer to find the right bit or the right tool. So I'm super excited how this turned out.